Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Bake Stuff Brie. That's right, I'm going to show you how to put together what I consider one of the ultimate holiday party foods. And that's because to your guests, it's going to look like you put a lot of effort into this. I mean, anybody can slap a wedge of cheese on a plate and throw some crackers around it. But when people see something like this on the table, they really know you care. And by the way, I said looks like you put a lot of effort into this. Because in reality, this is quite easy if you can get past the first step, which is to somehow split a very sticky, gooey wheel of brie in half without destroying it or losing half of it on the knife. And for me, the best way to do that is with what I call the James Bond villain technique. And you'll see why in a second. Before this, we're going to need one whole wheel of brie. And I'm using the smaller wheel. You can do this with the big ones, but these are much easier to work with. And speaking of easier to work with, make sure this is right out of the fridge. All right, we want this nice and cold and firm. And what we're going to do here is take a knife and score the side of the brie all the way around, about an eighth of an inch deep. And we do want to make sure we start that cut directly in the center. Okay? And then we'll simply continue until that's been scored all the way around. So we really don't need to go too deep, just enough to get a string in, which, by the way, is the next step. So we're going to take a piece of kitchen string or plain dental floss and go around placing that into our newly made cut. Oh, and by the way, the reason I call this the Bond villain technique is because in every movie, it seemed like someone wanted to do what you're about to see to his neck with a piece of piano wire, even though they always had guns and could have just shot him. But anyway, like I said, we're going to go around with the string and then we'll twist it through once like this. And then we'll grab both ends of the string near the brie and simply pull in opposite directions thereby splitting that brie perfectly in half with no mess and no waste. Check it out. And please hold your applause until the end of the video. And once our brie has been split, it's ready to stuff. And because I'm doing kind of a winter holiday themed version, I'm gonna use some dried cranberries and some walnuts. So on one side, I'm gonna press in about, I don't know, I didn't measure, quarter cup, third of a cup of chopped dried cranberries. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do some walnuts, which as you can see, have been pretty finely chopped. And I usually don't do them quite that small, but these were left over from our now famous Russian tea cakes video. So I decided to use some up. But then I did add a few larger chunks because I was having second thoughts. And this probably wouldn't be a bad time to mention, you could fill these with anything you want. I mean, you are the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde of what goes inside. So pretty much any combination of dried fruit and nuts work great in these. And I've also done savory versions using things like sliced ham or sauteed mushrooms. So you do have a lot of options. But anyway, once that's set, we'll go ahead and place our cranberry side on top. And if you press those down pretty good, most of them should stay in place. But the pieces that don't can get shoved back in. Or of course eaten. Up to you. And then once our brie has been split and stuffed, we can move on to the wrapping. And for that, we're going to use a sheet of frozen puff pastry, which of course has been allowed to thaw. And we'll place that down on a floured work surface with a little more flour on top. And what we'll do is we'll roll that out to about an eighth of an inch thick. All right, if you roll it too thin, it might split open. But if it's too thick, it might not cook. So I think an eighth of an inch is just about perfect, which is about what I have right here. And at that point, let's go ahead and place our brie right in the center. And as with all things we wrap in dough, you want to make sure you have enough to cover. But I can tell just by looking, I got a lot of extra. So I'm going to go ahead and trim a little bit off at this point. And then before we do get to wrapping, I want to give this a little egg wash. And just in case you're not familiar, an egg wash is nothing more than one egg beaten with like a teaspoon of water. And by the way, hang on to that. We're also going to use it for the outside. But anyway, we'll go ahead and brush on a little bit of beaten egg. And then we will fold it up something like this. So I'm going to flop this edge over. And then the opposite side. And then as we bring those other sides into cover, you'll notice we do have a lot of extra. So at this point, all we need to do is basically pinch off whatever extra dough we think we don't need. And that's pretty much it. So be careful. Don't pull off too much. We do want total coverage. But we also don't want giant chunks of dough underneath. So that's looking pretty good right there. And then I will flip that over and kind of gently press in the sides. And our stuffed brie has officially been wrapped. And if we wanted, we could just stop right there. But of course, we want to decorate the top in show-stopping fashion. So what we'll do is we'll transfer that to a pan and brush that all over with our egg wash. And then make some kind of cool design with some extra puff pastry. And one great tip here, for the stuff you're going to use as your design, make sure the dough is very, very cold when you cut it. Okay, this is almost still frozen, but that way you're going to get nice sharp lines. And when you do use nice clean cuts for puff pastry, that's what really makes it puff up nice and high. And even if your dough is semi-frozen like mine is here, as soon as those pieces are cut, they thaw very quickly. So by the time you're done, those should be ready to place on your brie. And for mine, I decided to go with the old bunch of grapes design, which is my favorite. 
And by favorite, I mean the only one I know how to do. I mean, when it comes to decorating things, I'm more of a Patrick Stewart than a Martha Stewart. But having said that, even the most imperfect design, once baked, usually looks amazing. So I'm going to do a little piece of pastry for the stem, as well as twist one along the top for the vine, because vines are kind of twisty. And then I'll go ahead and place down my grapes. And I'll be using the standard 4-3-2-1 arrangement. And I'm not sure if it makes that big of a difference, but I do like to egg wash as I go. So like I said, I'm going to start with four grapes across the top, and then we'll continue with a row of three, and then two, and then we'll finish off with a single grape at the bottom of the bunch. And of course, we will make sure any dough we're adding gets brushed with egg wash. And you know what? That does not look too bad. And I could have, probably should have stopped right there, but I decided to try to add a little detail, so I used my knife to make a few markings on the vine, as well as attempted to roll up some dough into those little curly things, which are, I think, called tendrils? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure they're not called little curly things. And then last but not least, we're going to take a fork and do some very shallow scratches in the top of the dough. And that's just to hopefully add a little visual interest to the surface. So whether you want to mess with this stuff is up to you. And this kind of fine tuning is optional and probably not necessary, but it is kind of fun. And besides, who the heck wants to go through life only doing things that are necessary? That's not a good system. But anyway, once we're happy with our design, we are totally not ready to bake. Because maybe the most important step in this procedure is to place our brie in the freezer for exactly one hour before baking. All right, so this is critical. I don't care how hungry you are. We're going to pop that in the freezer for one hour, after which it's totally okay to bake. And I'm not sure why I froze this on a Silpat lined baking sheet, because I think you really do want to use parchment paper here. It is going to brown that bottom better than the baking mat. So once our brie has been frozen for an hour and placed on an appropriately lined baking sheet, we're finally ready to bake. So let's go ahead and place that in the center of a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until it looks like this. And what we're looking for is something that's beautifully browned and a little bit of the brie is starting to leak out. Now I will say I have cooked some of these that have not leaked, which is extremely rare. So if yours has baked for like 20 to 25 minutes and it's nice and brown and it's not running, it's probably still ready. But that little bit of leakage is generally the visual cue that this is perfect. And then we really don't have to let this cool. We can go ahead and transfer that onto our serving platter, or in my case, nicely garnished cutting board. And that's it, our baked stuffed brie is done. So let me go ahead and grab a knife and cut in and see how we did. And I've had these before where the outside's browned, but the inside was exactly like a cold brie, which kind of defeats the purpose. As my friend Guy might say, if it's not runny, it's not money. So that's exactly what you want to go for. Gorgeous, molten, cranberry and walnut studded brie. So that is absolutely perfect. And I really should be moving that wedge so you can get a better look. But I can't because I have to eat some right now. Which I'll do with the help of a crispy, crunchy, crustini delivery system. And that really is an amazing bite. I mean, the way those sweet and sour dry cranberries and crunchy walnuts kind of bake and steam with that brie inside that buttery crust really does create something very, very special. And the more you eat, the better it looks. Which I've simulated here by removing, and definitely not eating, that wedge we cut out. And by the way, those sliced persimmons were just not for a garnish. If you use a variety called Fuyu, no, not Fubu, Fuyu, those are the ones you can eat firm, and they're very sweet and delicious. It makes the perfect base for this. But anyway, that's it. Bake stuffed brie. Incredibly delicious, visually stunning, and if you can master that fairly simple Bond villain technique for splitting that brie, a very easy thing to make. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.